Hey everyone, it's been a while, and as those of you who follow me on Twitter know, I've actually been off sick, so I haven't been doing much in the way of project work. But as some of you may have noticed in my last video where I did the wrap-up on the Charity 3D printer, I've been working on rearranging my recording space. Really, my basement isn't big enough to support two hobbies, and I've got my retro gaming collection and I've got my 3D printing and recording. So I finally decided this is print and play, why not combine them? So I've got my retro gaming collection behind me, I've got you guys in front of me, and I'm pretty happy with the way things are shaping up. Now, the one thing that I've never gotten right, as far as I'm concerned, no matter how I've adjusted things, is I've never gotten this space here to look the way I want it to. I've gotten it close. Um, this wood grain texture here, this adhesive, was along the right path, but unfortunately had no durability. After I did this, I ended up covering the entire thing in some blue paper that I found, which I figured would at least be easy to replace, but ultimately, garbage and stuff just got in between the sheets and it just wasn't a good solution. So last weekend, I was browsing uh, my local Rona and I was going through the flooring section of all things and I found some really beautiful flooring on clearance. So I've got a plank of it here. It's this sort of beautiful grayish wood grain and uh, it feels like it's gonna be really, really durable. It's a nice thick sort of laminate and it was only like a buck a square foot. I think I paid less than 25 bo bucks or around 25 bucks for the whole box bucks for the whole box. But try saying that 10 times fast. So I think this is actually going to make a pretty good finish on the table and it shouldn't be a difficult project to complete and the best part is I should have some left over in the box when I'm done which means that if a piece ever gets damaged I can just click it out, replace it, and be back off to the races. So yeah, hopefully you guys will find this a little bit helpful and maybe somebody will even be able to follow along at home and uh, let's just get to it. So there you have it, in less than an hour we got this nice little project done. So just to walk you through what I was doing in the video there, the first thing I did was lay down one of the boards and then I measured from the outer edge of the table to the edge of the wood grain on it. You want to ignore the tongue and groove because the tongue and groove lock together and disappear so they don't count in the actual length. Using that measurement I then marked off the boards I was planning to cut and I marked off from both ends. You see, you're going to cut off both ends so that you can create caps that go sort of back and forth. So as you can see here, I have a short board, then a long board, then up I have a long board and a short board. And it continues that pattern all the way up. So this is important for two reasons. Number one, it allows you to use the same board twice when you're filling in here so you don't waste as much. And number two, it creates a more reinforced structure because this short board and long board are now locked together by this long board and it continues that pattern all the way up. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. The wood grain seems to be nice and elegant to me and it's pretty much exactly what I was picturing in my head. I really like the actual gray, the whole tone of it's just fantastic and I think it's going to look really good in the videos that I shoot. It's not so white that it's going to wash out my video, but it's not so dark that details are going to be lost with it. 
Now in terms of my cuts, I did them on my miter saw, but you can really use any saw that you have access to. You can use a skill saw or a jigsaw or even a hand saw. Um, you're going to want to make the cuts as clean as possible, but since they don't lock together, they don't have to be 100% perfect. Now keep in mind that if you have a bad cut and you're planning to have it so that that edge is displayed, that is going to show up to everybody. Uh, so take your time, be patient, and you can finish this project nice and quick even with just a handsaw. Now one thing you'll probably notice is that even though I cut both ends off the boards, I didn't really use a lot of them. So I saved the excess and I used some wood glue and glued them together. Now this waste board has actually been turned into a cutting board that I can use when I'm working on the surface here. So if I'm doing some soldering or some cutting or anything that could potentially damage the surface, I lay this down and I damage this instead. I don't really care if this gets marked up and I'm hoping to make this table topper last as long as possible. So I hope you've enjoyed this first video back. I'm just getting back into the swing of things and I think getting this table done and making this nice recording space is a good first step for me. So if you enjoyed it, toss me a thumbs up. If you didn't, well, the other button's there too. You can give me a thumbs down, but at least let me know in the comments what I can do to improve. I want to take a second to thank all of my subscribers and my viewers and my Patreon supporters for helping me get this recording operation up and running. It's been a heck of a year and I'm looking forward to getting back into the swing of things and putting out more content and I've got some pretty cool projects planned out so I hope you guys will stick around. Well, I guess I'll see you guys in the next one and until then, stay creative.